tricky to see, but you can see the ears and the eyes quite clearly there. Now it's amazing because I can't see anything. I'm looking at a dark, dark area in the bush, unless I'm looking at the same picture as you are looking at, and I can see a scrub hair in the infrared lights there. Now scrub hair is typically, essentially, a lot of people might just call them a rabbit. I'll explain a bit just now why it's a hare and not a rabbit. But with normal lights, they would have scampered off very, very quickly. He's just sitting there, and he might do a bit of movement just now, maybe cruise around a bit, but they are very nocturnal. Hardly ever see them in the daytime. One of the main differences um, in terms of how they live, the habitat and the way they live, their behavior between rabbits and hares, is that hares, like in this case a scrub hare, they don't live in warrens or they don't use holes to stay in. So in the daytime they just sleep under a bush or somewhere where they're quite camouflaged and hidden and at night they do their thing they go around and they eat grass same as rabbits but rabbits use their warrens as safety in the day they can be in there and even at night they normally don't go very far from the warrens so because of that they've evolved very very different with rabbits they tend to be a bit more bulky a little bit slower a little bit smaller ears scrubbies are very quick very agile and a very big difference is that they've got big ears. You can see this guy's got huge ears relative to his face. Obviously that is because they can't rely on running underground when something threatens them. They've got to be much more alert. So incredibly good hearing, incredibly good smell, very good sight. And that enables them to most of the time avoid predators. And then they're also much quicker. If you look at if this guy, you can't see much of his body now, but they're much more slender relative to rabbits. It's very cool to see. Once again, with normal spotlights, I mean, years and years of guiding and being in other areas and being in this area as well. Some years ago, I've never really watched scrub here just relax at night. Even though what he's doing at the moment is not much, but he's not bothered by us. As far as he's concerned, we can't see him. We don't pose a threat, um, and he's just sitting there quietly, probably waiting for us to move on, or maybe just now he'll cruise around. Just to give you an idea, like I said, I can't see him at all at the moment uh, if I just look in that direction where he is. But he's about 9 meters away, you know, about 25, 30 feet away. Always alert. You can imagine if you were this size, you'd have to be very alert to things around you. You could obviously hide easy as well, so it's not that he's terrified. I mean, people often think that things like little guys like scrub hair or impala live in this constant fear of predators. They don't. They've evolved as well quite happily and uh, successfully in this environment. So they can obviously cope as well as a lion or an elephant could. That's how they found their niche. In this case, he's just very alert. The ears are always listening around. Um, the nose, as you can see there, constantly smelling and sniffing. So even that, he would be well aware of anything coming anywhere upwind from him. And then his eyes as well. Huge eyes, if you were, at the moment you see more the reflection of the light off, his, off the back of his retina. Something called the tepita, tepitum lucidum, which is where the reflection comes from. But if his eye was in daylight, it's quite a large eye. So they've got very good eyesight at night as well. And at the moment, with that virtually full moon that we saw earlier, um, you know, it's very, very light out here. So for him, this is as good as daylight for us. Well, hairs are beautiful, but he's not doing too much. I think we're going to head down the road and see what else is around. It certainly seems like scrub ears are out tonight. Let's get to the 
this side here a bit. At the moment, I'm literally looking at nothing. I'm just looking at dark. I can't even get to have a look. So I'm talking about what I presume is a sitting open. The characteristics of the animal at the moment, just his body shape, his coloration, that slight sort of tinge behind his ears. In normal daylight, that would be a sort of a rusty color. I'm just going to move a little bit, come closer to me, seeing what you see. Now that is awesome. <laughs> Yet again, I'm sure all of you watching this with me are enjoying this, even though it's just a little bunny rabbit. But what is really amazing about this is seeing this behavior now I might be more than some other people but seeing this behavior is just mind-blowing he's grooming himself a little bit there just cleaning off maybe a little tick or a flea that's in his fur he's busy feeding and to see this is just awesome it really is just so cool that's amazing actually if you look at the patterns on his back see these little looks like ridges almost now what that would suggest to me is probably before we came down the road and disturbed him slightly he was busy doing quite a bit of grooming so he was probably busy cleaning his sides licking it which is putting that fur into that pattern typically they sort of a grayish down the back and he's just resumed that again cleaning his back paw Oh, this is so cool. He's eating a bit of grass again. Another interesting thing that hares do is they eat the grass little pellets and then once they've defecated, literally just looks like little pellets of grass afterwards, they tend to eat some of it again just to re-digest it, digest it better, get more nutritional value from it. Basically they're sort of doing what your ruminants like impala and giraffe do in different stomachs. These guys sort of do it just the more manual way busy grazing. It's funny, I've never described a scrub here as grazing. I guess that's what he's doing. I've just never ever seen them do this before and I might have seen literally probably two or three thousand scrub in my life. ears now. Not, not so easy to see but those ears are very thin. If you were to feel them or stand very close and look at it they literally may be a millimeter thick or a millimeter thin especially towards the tips. And what that allows them to do especially in summertime when it gets really warm is they can cool down with it. There's a lot of blood vessels running through the ears. And if they keep that nice and cool then um, that can cool them down. The same goes for when it gets really cold. Now tonight's not a bad evening. It's probably, I don't know exactly, but probably 17, 18 degrees Celsius out here, which is about 70, 65, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not very cold. But if you see these guys in midwinter, they tend to sit under bushes a lot more, keep their ears flat against their ears there as well. You still see those patterns on his back from his grooming earlier. Look at that. see the eyeball or the pupil better there, the shape of the eye, like I mentioned earlier, huge eyes. Obviously they evolve for nocturnal life or for nocturnal behavior if you want, nocturnal activity. Even though in daytime you will sometimes see them, sometimes on overcast days you'll see them scampering around the 